Hi everyone, Jason Eichelberg along with Rich Gonzalez. We are among the last few here at Veterans Stadium, Buchanan High School in Clovis, finishing up the 100th edition of the CF State Track Field Championships. Bit of a girls recap. A lot of good action here, some surprises, some not so surprising. We'll start off in the girls' 100 meter dash. Ariana obviously in Long Beach Poly, she was favorite coming, or she's a winning champion both the 100 and the 200, and we figured she would have had her hands full. May not win either one, and that is exactly what happened. Yeah, you know, when you come in with the burden of expectation to try to repeat, uh, I think sometimes maybe it gets to you, but sometimes you just get outperformed. And I think that was the case here today. Deanna Nowling from uh, Calabasas, a fantastic race in the 100, and she was able to pull out the victory. Deanna has a lot of charisma, and earlier in the year, she basically think some of her goals were go ahead and build her brand, get a pro contract, and compete in Olympic Games. <laughs> so she definitely has no shyness in her. Taking the first step today. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> definitely. Deanna won the 100 in 11.47 when legal. In the 200, Ariana Augustine actually had a better race there. Like she was going to win, she had a pretty good margin, then began to struggle down the stretch, and then fell right at the finish. And it appears she may have actually also tripped over her own shoelace. And it was very unfortunate. And your winner in that event, Tia Robinson Jones, we figured she would be the favorite in the two and the four, and that's what happened. Yeah, again, you talk about the level of expectation and maybe having to execute. Ariana Augustine ran a fantastic, fantastic race, but in the last 30 meters, it kind of caught up to her, and somebody was there to take advantage of her. No, most definitely. It was our girl, Tia Robinson Jones, looking forward to getting again. The 200 400 sweep in California, in some of the two rounds, Friday and Saturday. It's a grind, it's definitely a grind. In the 400, she had to be at her best because Malia Medley from El Toro, Orange County record yet again, 5305. So the top two, 5237, 5305, that happens rarely in California, the state. Great battle between the two, a great amount of respect. Afterwards, Medley complimented Tierra Robinson Jones and her ability to close and kick down the stretch. A great show of sportsmanship there. In the distances in the 800 meter run, Alyssa Brewer, defending champion from California of San Ramon, we knew she had an injury coming in. The question was how effective she would be. Unfortunately, she couldn't make the call for the prelims, so that opened the door for last year's uh, second place finisher, Kathleen McIntosh of Del Oro. She was phenomenal. Close in sub 62, yesterday in prelims, today just over 62, ran 205 and change. A phenomenal time, a big breakthrough for her. One of the highlights of the meet for me. Um, two times in a row she'd been runner up. One of those things where you're looking to break through the door, you were wondering coming in, did she take too much out in prelims yesterday? The answer emphatically was no. She had a lot left in the tank. Girls 1600, we figured that would be the event of the weekend. It was a very strong event, but it was our defending champion, Maddie Denner, Oak Ridge of El Dorado Hills. She was the queen in the end, ended up pulling it out and against a very good field. And it was her sister, Elena Denner, who pulled off the magic and the victory in the 3200. In that 3200, she ended up, Elena won, her sister Maddie was second. He scored 18 points temporarily with one event remaining that put them first in the team standings. So it created a lot of drama down the stretch. Rich has been doing this for a while, and I can't remember two sisters whose performances spurred each other. Both of them even admitted as much so as that they drew inspiration from each other and that helped them to victory in each of their different races. And all three girls from the distances, Kathleen McIntosh of Del Oro, Maddie and Elena Dano, the state champions from Oak Ridge, not only from the second section, also from the very same league. So one league with three, three straight champions in the 8632, definitely extremely rare. <laughs> that doesn't happen much. Shifting over to the hurdle races. First off, we will start off with Jada Hicks looking outstanding in the short hurdles. <laughs> you know, Jada has been the standard throughout the season. She had you know, been to the 13.54 four times. She finally broke that yesterday. A little bit slower today, but executed a fantastic race, and her reward was a state championship. What was great to see, one of the surprises, a smiled surprise, was in the 300 immediates. Brianna Bernard Joseph Roosevelt. The reason I say a bit of a mild surprise is she was never on the top step, but she was always maintaining contact all season long. She was in the conversation, in the neighborhood, with the top hurdlers. And in the most important race, the one that really mattered, she came out on top. Fantastic to watch her journey because in this, again, like Rich said, she was not the winner in a lot of the big races this year. Finished third, fourth, second sometimes. Had strong performances, not able to get over the hump. But today, when it all mattered, she pulled through with a fantastic race. Over in the field events. High jump, a little bit of controversy. <laughs> in any high jump, you're, you're supposed to break a tie when it comes to tie for first place. There is no such thing as a, as a closed day champion until today. <laughs> Bit of a unilateral decision by an event official, an official overseeing, and along the way the channels 
kind of slipped through the cracks a little bit. We ended up with two state champions. Basically, neat management at that point in time felt it would be a little bit too problematic to go ahead and try and break the tie under what, at that point in time, had evolved into basically unfortunate or basically demanding, extenuating circumstances. So the feeling was, let's go ahead and just declare co champions. You know, our two combatants, Rachel Glenn of Long Beach Wilson and Abigail Burke of Riverside Poly, the defending state champion coming in, were very gracious in terms of their compliments of each other and how they both felt you know, fortunate to win the state title. The undercurrent of that though is that this was a unique situation and one in which each competitor wanted to keep going, was not able to happen that way, so both girls get a championship. Definitely something that you don't see very often here at California State. The girls' pole vault was interesting. At the start of the year, the top girl in the state, Laurel Wong, she also won the California Winter Championship at 13-3. She was not able to duplicate that during the season. And I'm not quite sure if maybe she was feeling some pressure. Some other kids were stepping up. Today, she came through. Five girls tied at 12-6, four girls, excuse me, and she won in the jump off. So she won under pressure. You know, it's one of those situations where you set the bar high early and the level and the stress that you need to maintain throughout the season sometimes could get to you. But give Wong credit. She even said that, you know, today was about making sure that she was battle tested, that she was able to go out there and perform. She knew she had to be as clean as possible if she wasn't able to get over hurdle or over the bar at certain heights. She was able to do that and because she was so clean, she was able to win. I always felt that the winning event that was gonna be very interesting to watch be a long time. A lot of good love numbers in California. The girl physically that was most impressive to me during the latter part of the season was Eliza Hickey from Coronado in the San Diego section. She splits her time between the high jump and the long jump. Today, I talked to her coach beforehand and kind of a bit more emphasis on the long jump and she came through big time and ended up going ahead and winning the state title there, just under 20 feet even. It's one of those situations where you want to make sure you're performing as well as you can as you get later and later in the season. Sometimes you'll peak early and you can struggle later on. This is a case of somebody who was starting to peak as the season got to its important meets, and she was able to perform here today. In the triple jump, Ariana Fisher, she's a big talent in Silver Creek in the San Jose area, Central Coast section. She was your winner, 41-7. Michael Fulton, who scratched out yesterday, Michael Fulton premier, scratched out in the long jump. She came back, despite that massive discipline yesterday, to come back and get the silver medal today. Gotta give her credit. Um, obviously, she didn't get the victory, but it was a fantastic way for her to kind of rebound after what was a tough end to the season for her. A lot of high expectations, but she was able to go ahead and put forth a solid performance. Wrapping up in the, in the throws, Jocelyn Budwick, I kind of thought she was gonna be the favorite to go ahead and sweep both throwing events. She definitely came through in the shot put, which I thought would be her tougher challenge. She ended up going ahead and pulling that off, 46-11 to win by 10 inches. But then she took second in a great showdown these are two California all-timers, really you know, up, up on the all-time list, and it was Erica Gordigier from the Wheatland, the northern section, the northern section, winning it in 174.9, a very nice PR, just a shade further than what uh, Jocelyn threw yesterday in previews. Brodiger, a fantastic performance in the discus, a couple of throws over 170, including the winner of 174.9, um, representing the northern section, doesn't always get a lot of champions. I believe this is the first time that someone from the northern section has won the discus in the last 35 years, at least, if I'm not mistaken. And then Budwig, she shook off a bad performance in the discus, came out, her first throw was her winning throw in the shot put. You gotta give her credit, obviously she had a disappointment there, she didn't let that affect her, and obviously she came out with state championship. Wrapping up your team championship, it came down to the very last event on the girls' side, the 4x4 relay. At the start of the day, Sarah ended up from the southern section, ended up going ahead and scoring 10 points, winning the 4 by 100. They actually came into the last event trailing because Polly, Long Beach Polly, had some setbacks. Sarah had to go ahead and basically get fourth or better to go ahead and seal up the title. They ended up getting second, 344 37, just behind Bonita, which had a state leading 342 62. But that wrapped it up for the Cavaliers, their second state title since 2012. Uh, I think the phrase is Sarah's speed, if I'm not mistaken. That's what they live by. That's their motto. They've demonstrated that all season long. They use that again to go to the well, and when they pulled it out, they pulled out a state championship. Fantastic job for Sarah this year. So once again, but plenty of really good action. We were kind of wondering what would be the headline. There were several. A lot of the defending champions struggled. A lot of new faces emerged, and a lot of very, very close contests. From I'm sorry. No gonna say this is the beauty of the California State Meet. You never quite know what you're gonna get here. You get a good show. We got one here today. A solid shout out to all the athletes that can be here this week.
from Buchanan High School in Clovis, California. Mr. Rich Gonzalez and Eric Jason Eichelberger wrapping up. Make sure you check back on Prep College Track and we'll have plenty of videos, stories, and notes from our entire team here this weekend in Clovis.